of God. This is Resurrection Sunday. The day we remember all that Jesus Christ has done for us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Just to tell God how much we appreciate all that he has done for us. Uh, and, and this is the ultimate. This is the ultimate of days. The days that that the whole job that Jesus came to do is completed. So our salvation is completed. And man, just if we could understand just the uh, ten percent of all that entailed, it would just blow our mind. But uh, we're here uh, to, to to find out a little bit more about what God has done in sending His Son to Earth. For us, praise the Lord. Every first Sunday of the month here in the Philadelphia Deliverance Tabernacle, we welcome you, all of our visitors. God bless you. All those that are watching on YouTube, we thank God for you. Amen. Uh, but every first Sunday, uh, we serve communion. And I thought what better uh, day it would be to serve communion today and, and have the elements and remind us again, even more so, what Jesus Christ came to do. So here in the Tabernacle, we passed out the elements, and if you're at home, you can uh, pause the video uh, and run and get some uh, some form of cracker and some form of, of juice uh, that will symbolize the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, last week, Jesus, he kept and observed the feast of the Lord, and last week we, we talked about a little bit about Passover and and I was astonished to find that one quarter of the book of or the Gospel of John is just during the Passover supper. Mm -hmm. and, and in John, it doesn't even talk about the, the body and the, the blood, and it doesn't talk about his birth, but it, it, it talks so much, so much good, really good stuff there is uh, Jesus teaching around the Passover supper. But we know that Jesus told us as often as we do it, we're to do it in remembrance of God, of him, remembering the ultimate sacrifice that God was, was uh, paying for our atonement, for our sins. And so Jesus, he looked at his disciples and he, he broke the bread. And I like to take it and I like to physically break it in remembrance of what Jesus said. His body was broken for our healing. His body was broken for our physical, mental, uh, emotional, uh, healing and deliverance. He said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take ye this do in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. His body and our body. Hallelujah. I always think of what Jesus said. He said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, Jesus is the word of God. And you shall ask what you will, and it shall be given. And that's amazing that God has promised us healing in our body, our physical body. But it would be no good if we were to die and go to hell. I mean, the ultimate reason Jesus came was the shedding of his blood, which was symbolized by the wine. And Jesus said, this, is, this cup represents or symbolizes my blood that was shed for you. The word of God says, apart from the shedding of the blood, there be no remission of sins. There be no way to pay for sins apart from Jesus' blood. So he said, take drink, this do, in remembrance of me.
broken, his blood was shed. I know some people are always looking for something to complain about. But for me, I, I'm always looking uh, for an excuse. I know you don't really have to look very hard. But as we're just thinking about the, the broken body of Jesus Christ and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, and the song is singing, the evidence is overwhelming. I'm looking up at a sign across the street that says, now open and squeaky clean. That's exactly what Easter is all about, or the Resurrection Day is all about. No matter how sinful you are, no matter how dirty you are, no matter what you've done, yeah. it is the blood of Jesus yeah. that will now open you up and make you squeaky clean. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm excited about what God is doing. He's doing amazing, amazing things. I have a, a very short uh, 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 Easter message for us today so that you can uh, get in the buffet line early uh, <laughs> before all the good stuff is gone. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to tell my wife, hopefully uh, I, I won't get beat up. But just before that, uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I was treated. My wife took me out and she bought me uh, two suits, and and then the, on my birthday, she said, you're going to wear your birthday suit? And I said, no, I, I probably should wear clothes. Uh, so we wore one of the suits then, and then this week, I get to wear my pajamas. Uh, but, um, <laughs> oh, never mind. No, my, my wife, she, she's an awesome woman of God, and, and, and she likes to take notes, and, uh, you know, I was always... A little afraid to to write in the margin of the Bible. I know a lot of people do that, and it's really good. The Lord speaks to you right in the margin of your Bible, uh, but I, I did it a more complicated right, way. I you know, rip a piece of paper off and write down what the Lord is speaking. And you know, I don't know where those pieces of paper are today. But she has all that stuff in her Bible, so it's it's a hard thing to go to a new Bible. And and, and she's been here uh, through the years here at the Philadelphia Deliverance Tabernacle. And every time someone spoke a message, she would write the title of the message. Uh, by the scripture verse. And there is one title that's been spoken more <laughs> over the years in PDT, because it just, you know, he is risen times three, times four, <laughs> times five, times 17. <laughs> by, it's by Mark 16, 6. And he said unto them, be not affrighted, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified, he is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. So she asked me what the title was today. And, you know, I led her astray just a little bit. I told her it was, he is risen. <laughs> but as I've been praying and, and laying before the Lord, asking what uh, I should share with you today, I'm going to take a little different approach. Uh, Psalms 20, verses 7 and 8. Uh, and... I said, I'm going to change the title to We is Risen. But I said, no, that's not good. That. That's we is. Ebonic, so I have to modify it a little bit more. Today's title is We Are Risen. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So it's not just He is Risen. and But for those of you that speak Ebonic, We is Risen. We is risen. And for everyone else, we are risen today. We celebrate. We are risen. Psalms 20, verses 7 and 8. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and stand upright. I believe what the Lord is saying. He said some folks out there, they put their trust in their bank account. Yeah, I know yeah, if yeah. I, I'll go out and do whatever I want, and, and if I mess up, I'll just write you a check. You know how some rich, extremely yeah. rich folks are. Mm -hmm. They can just break the law all over the place because they, they know congressmen and judges, and they can write a check, and they can get out of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know what they say about the golden rule, them that has the goals make the rules. <laughs> That's how they understand the golden rule. Uh, and they put their trust in their wealth. They put their trust in nations, put trust in their armies, and they put trust in, in different things. But we, we don't have that extreme wealth. We that uh, don't have all those connections, we put our trust in, in God because he is the ultimate yeah. connection. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can mention any name of anybody here on earth. Well, I'm going to go to the governor. 
I'm going to go to the president. Well, I'm going to go to his boss. His name is God, Jehovah, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, President of Presidents. Amen. We have that connection. Philippians 3, verse 7. I'm telling you, I'm not going to be very long getting this timing thing worked out. I'm going to keep it somewhere between uh, six hours and six minutes. Amen. Praise the Lord. Philippians 3, and that's where I want to take the heart of the message from. Philippians 3, 7 through 10. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and counted them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and in the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. You know, if you've been here a while, you've heard me quote that verse 10 quite a bit, that I might know him striving to know him. But it, go, it doesn't stop there. I might know him in the power of his resurrection. This is Resurrection Sunday. Yeah. And it said, but then it goes on and it, it seems to go downhill from there. It said that, and the fellowship of his suffering and being conformed to his death. Why can't we just stop at the power of his resurrection? So I began to look in this week, what does it mean? What is he really saying, the fellowship of his suffering? Well, you know, the word fellowship there in the Greek is the exact same word that is translated as communion elsewhere. I want to commune with God and understand with God. I want to understand that everything Jesus went through is what I should have gone through for my sins. I want to understand. I want to share that responsibility. I want to take on what he went through, that all that spitting on. I mean, it, it, it's, it's easy uh, to sit in our pews and hear about how Jesus went. We went, a lot of us went to see the movie, The Passion, how they whooped Jesus and chunks of his flesh came off and they, they could beat him and, and, and blood, oh, blood was everywhere. And, and we sit in our seat and cringe and say, oh, I'm glad he did it for me. Yes, he did it for you, but every one of those lashes should have been yours. Yeah. Every one. We, we, we have no idea how awful sin is to God. The only way to pay for our sins is to actually give our lives, but because we are a flawed sacrifice, and God demands a perfect sacrifice, we have to spend an eternity paying for what we've done. But because Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice, because he knew no sin and was sacrificed, and all the wrath of God was poured out upon him, he did it all for us. We remember last week how uh, we had Sister Brittany come down and we talked about how Jesus, in this Passover message, he washed the feet of his disciples, and we gave that example that as Jesus knelt down with his clean towel to wash the disciples' feet, uh, the, the more he cleaned their feet, the, the cleaner they got, but the dirtier he got. And that's ex exactly how it went. We, and that's what it means to commune with the fellowship or the fellowship of his suffering. We've got to remember that that is our suffering. And, and people have mistakenly uh, uh, taken this to, to think that, oh, because I know Christ, I have to suffer for him. And, and, and that's what uh, Martin Luther thought, the, the early church thought, when the, the church got corrupted. Uh, the popes would teach, tell you, you have to punish yourself for your sins. Mm. And they would make these little flails and they would beat themselves in the back mm. as punishment. They have, I have to suffer with Christ. If I want to reign with him, I have to suffer with him. And no, no. Jesus Christ did the suffering. He just wants to know it's part of your suffering. That's part of what you had to go through. You went through with me. When you signed on with me, when you said yes to me, that suffering was partly yours too. I like to say uh, uh, Matthew uh, chapter 11, verse 28 all the time. He said, come unto me, all you that are labored and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. All those of you, I mean, life is hard. 
If you've lived more than five minutes on the earth, you found out someone's going to smack you on the bottom as soon as you showed up. <laughs> you haven't done anything yet, and life is knocking you around. <laughs> and so that scripture is saying, come unto me all you that are labor and heavy laden. People are going to talk about you, lie on you. You haven't done anything, anything wrong. And sometimes maybe you did do wrong. But then they, the retribution is so far worse than what you did. But, you know, you were born into poverty or, or whatever it is. So come unto me, all you that are labor and heavy loving. I will give you rest. All right. And he said, take my yoke upon you. Now, a yoke is identified with work. It's the thing, the collar they would put on an animal uh, because they're getting ready to work. Usually to plow a field or to pull a wagon or to do some kind of work. So God says, yes, come to me. Life is beating you up. And he said, and let me yoke up with you. Yes. He said, for my yoke is easy, yes. and my burden is light. Yes. Now, imagine, if you will, if they made this lopsided yoke, and they put one uh, side on the elephant and the other side on the mouse. <laughs> the mouse is not going to do a whole lot. Right. That's about how it is with God. All we have to do is show up to the battle. Yes. Show up even though we're afraid. Yeah. When God says, I want you to be there and stand, God says, I've already won the victory. You just have to show up with your sword in your hand. You just have to show up with your armor on. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's what we're talking about today. That's what Jesus won today in the resurrection. He said, come unto me, learn of me. The thing that we have to do is to learn of Jesus Christ. I wasn't even supposed to go there today. But that's what he was, he's telling us. Come to me. Come to me. I understand that I suffered greatly for you. That I might know him. Because without acknowledging that, that we are, are the, the cause, the reason of his, his sufferings, once we acknowledge that, then we can enjoy the power of his resurrection. We can't enjoy the power of his resurrection without identifying ourselves with his suffering. And it says, then being conformed to his death. We've got to realize that Christ didn't simply die for us. He died as us. Romans 6.6 6 says, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Our old man is crucified with him that the body of sin might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. Our flesh, our sinful nature is crucified with Jesus. We were hung up on the cross. We're identifying with his suffering. We were crucified with him according to the word of God. Galatians 2.20 I know most of you know this. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. I'm still alive. Yet not I, but it's Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith, not in the Son of God, but of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm crucified with Christ. It was me hanging up on the cross. It was you hanging up on the cross for all of your sins, what you've done wrong. But now, I'm not alive according to my own will, my own way, my own flesh, my own doing, but I'm alive in Christ by the faith of the Son of God. Our wimpy faith might not be able to grab hold to this concept that God did all of this for us. I, I've, I've run into people say, you know, I just can't believe. It's that simple. But you have to take on the faith of Jesus Christ. Jesus know he, he suffered for you. He know he, he loves you. And you can just tap into that. And then you can really believe, wow, God, you did all of this for me. And it will be overwhelming. Godly sorrow calls us to repent. If we had the faith of Jesus Christ spread abroad on the whole world, all of them, would have godly sorrow come on them and they would realize the ugliness of the sins and how they transgressed against God. And they too would be crucified with Christ. Colossians 2.12 We're buried with him in baptism whereunto also ye are risen with him through the faith 
of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Why do we believe in baptism? Baptism doesn't save you. What saves you is says, I accept the work. Actually, the salvation is the fellowship of his suffering. I accept the suffering. I accept what Jesus Christ has done for me. That's what saves you. And I always say the next thing you need to do is say, okay, I'm turning away from my old life. I might have some habits, but might be difficult to, to, to break. But I've made the first step. God, I acknowledge you paid an awesome price for me to have a relationship with you. Now, God, let's help, help me work on me to turn away from those things that displease you. And then what we encourage folks to do is to get baptized in water. A lot of people think it's just a physical thing and uh, an outward sign for an inward work. But I believe there's more to it than that. I believe when we're baptized, it doesn't do any good if you're not saved. You have to be accept Jesus Christ, then get baptized. And you identify with his burial. Yes. When you go down in the water, you identify with his burial. And then when you come up, you're raised with him victorious. Yes. I believe it does something in the spirit realm. Yes. Again, it doesn't do anything for you if you have not accepted Jesus Christ in your heart. Only thing it does is you go down warm and dry and you come up cold and wet. So now what do we do once we realize that we is risen with I mean, we are risen with him. Now what do we do? What does that mean? Where do we go from here? Colossians 3, 1 through 4 answers that question. If then ye be risen with Christ, number one, seek those things which are above, right. where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. That's what we were talking about in Matthew 11. If we come to him, uh, the next thing he tells us to do uh, is to learn of him. Here in, in, in Colossians, he's telling us to seek the things which are above. Are you seeking the things which are above? Some people here, you know, I, I've heard people say they, they want to go to the school, and they want to go to a seminary, they want to become a pastor and have a big church so they can have a big salary and a big house and a big car. That's not seeking the things which are above. I'm not seeking a huge congregation. Some of you said, amen, that's a good thing. But I'm seeking to please God, and if I please God, that's all that matters. Yes. I've told this story about this man who was playing the, he was a, a, a piano player, a pianist, and someone got wind of how good he was, and they had some connections, and man, you should be playing at Carnegie Hall. And the man said, you really, you think I'm, I'm good enough? And he said, oh yeah, yeah. So he sets up this whole concert at Carnegie Hall, and the place is packed out, and he's playing the piano, and he, he's doing his thing. I mean, you know, he's flopping his hair back, and he's into it. He's really playing it. It's amazing. And the whole audience jumps up and applauds and applauds. And he stands up to take a bow, but just before he goes down, he noticed that one guy on the front row is sitting there with his arms folded. And he's, instead of taking a bow, he starts tearing up. And he gets off and he runs off stage and the guy who set up the whole thing said, man, what are you doing? They love you. Get back out there and take the bell. He said, no, I can't. I can't go back out there. He said, why not? He said, see that guy in the front row? He's still sitting there with his arms folded. He said, that's just one person. The whole place is erupting, shouting your praise. They love you. He said, but you don't understand. That's my piano teacher. We have to realize that we're not a playing for the whole world. We're not playing for the whole audience. We're not playing for everyone else. We're not performing for people, our neighbors, or what have you. We're performing for one person, the one who taught us, the one who made us, the one who enabled us to be the person that we are. That's what we're playing for. You see, there's an opposite story with a guy named Stephen. He did, went out there and did what God told him to do. He preached the gospel. He just preached the history of the church. And he said, this same Jesus came down. He was the son of God. He was the promised one. And you killed him. They got so mad at him. They took stones. And they stoned him to death. 
But as Stephen lay there dying, he said, God, don't hold this sin to their account. And he so looked up in heaven, he saw Jesus. It said when Jesus said it was finished and then the Father and the hands that came out of my spirit, he went to heaven and he sat down at the right hand of the Father. And Stephen said, I saw Jesus standing by the right hand of God. He had one man uh, applauding him. He had a one man standing ovation. Everyone else was hating on him. Everyone else wanted him to die. They didn't like the message of the gospel. But Stephen said, you know, that's okay. I don't care what the whole crowd does. Forgive them as long as I have that one man applauding yeah. And that's the way we have to look at life. As long as I have the resurrected Savior applauding for me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I had. Wow. Something just came to me and I saved it on my phone a couple of days ago. Just this now. Um, uh, yeah. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to find it fast enough. But anyway. It talks about how. How. Uh, Confucius, Muhammad, and Buddha all made statements, and I, I'm going to get them mixed up because I, I don't I didn't memorize. I just saw it, but one of them said, "You know what? I really don't always know which way to go." Once another one said, "You know what? I don't even know what real truth is." Not the whole world is like that today. Truth is relative. It's whatever you feel like, yeah. that's what you are. Yeah. Yeah. Some days you feel like a nut, some days you don't. Know. <laughs> it's all this, what gender do you identify with? I said, well, if that works for them, I identify as a retiree. Send me my check. <laughs> I don't know why it doesn't work that way. Right. See, these grown men identifying as babies. <laughs> Wearing diapers and sucking pacifiers in cribs, <laughs> all this foolishness going on. I said, "Well, I'm identify as an old man. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy." But anyway, one of them said, "You know, I, I don't always know which way is the right way to go. There are many paths in life, and I suppose you can take any one of them and ultimately end up where you want to be." That's what one of them said. Another one of them said, uh, I don't always know what truth is. And he said, I suppose if you can prove anything, if you show your work, like the math teacher used to say in school, if you show your work, I'll give you most of the credit for showing your work. Yeah. But let me tell you something. If the answer is still wrong, it's still wrong. I don't care how much work you put into it, it's still wrong. And the other one says, you know what? I don't know what the meaning of life is. I don't know why we're here. These are the three major religious figures, Muhammad, Confucius, and Buddha. And they say these things. But let me tell you, I know someone who says, I am the way. Yeah. I know which way to go. Yeah. I am the way. Yeah. I am the truth. If you don't know what the truth is, listen to the words that I speak. He said, you are cleansed by the words that I've spoken unto you. He said, my words are a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your pathway. He said, you don't have to, your feet don't have to slip or slumber or slide. Yeah. I don't know whose feet slumber, but your feet never have to slide. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, not only am I the way and not only am I the truth, but I am the light. Yes. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Life has no meaning without me. It has no purpose. God said, I created you to have relationship with me. That's why there's a big, gaping, empty hole in the hearts of men in the world. Yeah. They're looking, yeah. trying to satisfy that. They're trying yeah. to satisfy yeah. with drugs and sex and rock and roll or hip hop or whatever else out there. Jesus. But Jesus said, I know, I am the way, I am the truth, yes. I am the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Yes, yes, thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Somebody said, there's many ways to God. Mm. And some preachers said, no, there's not, no, there's not. Well, you know, I, I had to agree. Yep, there's many ways to God. Unfortunately, for most people, when you get to God, he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And for others, it's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah, you'll get to God, but you won't get into heaven. There's many ways to God. You can pick whatever you want. But Jesus said, I want to make it simple so there's no mistake. He said, if you accept me, he said, I will forgive you of your sins, and I will invite you into my kingdom to live with me forever. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever... 
believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you be risen with Christ, number one thing you need to do is seek those things which are above. Yes, yes. Jesus was teaching his disciples one day. He was saying, food, clothes, shelter, these are the things that the Gentiles seek after. I know most of us in here today are Gentiles, meaning we are not born Jewish. He said, that's what they seek after, but my children. He said, the father, which is the good father, he knows what you have need of, and he gives you these things. Any good father doesn't wait for his, his child to say, I'm hungry, before he thinks about getting them food. Any good parent doesn't think about trying to put a roof over the head of their children uh, before the, the child is moaning and groaning and complaining. These are things that children shouldn't have to ask for. Right. Yes. So God is providing. He said, I'll provide those things that you need. But we are to seek. Uh, for the greater things, the greater blessings, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Yes. And God said he will add all of these things to you. So he said, seek those things which are above, which where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And number two thing, he said, set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. Yes. Don't put your trust in riches. We read that in Psalm. Don't put your trust in your political connections. Don't put your trust in your job, your pension. Don't put your yes. trust... Even in your family, the, 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 I've heard it said time and time again, arms of flesh will fail you. Yes, yes. But Jesus never fails. I'm not telling you not to love your family. Of course, love your family. Love your friends. But don't put your trust in them. Ultimately, put your trust in God. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Set your affection on things above, not on things of this earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Romans 6, 8 says, Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Ephesians 2, 5, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace are ye saved. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but every one of the verses I've read so far all mention with Christ. Yes, yes. See, none of these things work without him. Yes. The world is trying to figure out how to make success and life and happiness all at the same time work without Christ. It's never going to happen. Yes. Never going to happen. You first have to come to God and realize that you're crucified with him. And then when you're crucified with him, you become a joint heir with him. Yes, yes. First Corinthians 6, 7 says, but he that hath is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Mm -hmm. This is more mind blowing than I have time to talk about. It's like when you take a cup of water, run uh, you know, across New Jersey to the ocean and dump that cup of water into the Atlantic Ocean. Then you come home, then you realize, wait, I want that cup of water back. You will never get that cup of water back. The molecules of that cup of water are now in England. And where else did the Atlantic Ocean go? The uh, South Africa, all up in the North Sea, the UK, Europe, all over. When we pour our spirit into God's spirit, it says, I mean, you can check your own Bible, but my Bible says, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. That's why when we talk to God in prayer, prayer can be immediate on the other side of the world because we're one spirit. Our spirit is where God is. That's, that's for another day. But that's why we can imagine and we can dream and God will show us things on the other side of the world because we're connected to him. He knows it all. We're connected to everything that's going on. I want to stay there and unpack that a little bit, but I, I got to move on. I said I was going to be short. Amen. So there's a great exchange that takes place. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God. Jesus Christ became sin itself so that we would be made righteous. When God looks at us, he doesn't see the, all that stuff that's running through your mind. And, and that's the devil. The devil can put stuff in your mind. He'll say, oh, you know, you know, you, you slept around. You know, you, you, 
took those drugs. You know you partied all night long. You know you lied. You know you cheated. You know you stole. He put all that stuff in your mind. But when God sees you, he says, that's my righteous son. That's my righteous daughter. Somebody said the reason God has this, the clear, crystal clear sea of glass in heaven, he said that's faith that God is looking for. He's looking through faith, seeing you, how he made your destiny, how he wrote you in your book of life. You see, before we came to earth, God has a destiny set for you. And, and, and if you have accepted Jesus Christ, he sees you through that, he sees that ultimate, the, the destiny, that what he has made you and created you to be. But, but, but what about all that stupid sin? And what about all of that? God will enable us. You see, when we come to God, we're crucified with Christ. We've got to keep remembering, my flesh is crucified, but I still have some hang-ups. Well, leave it hung up and, and, and then be risen with Christ. Today, we are risen with Christ. I said that this year was the year of the rapture. Yes, yes. Now, when I say that, I'm not saying it in, in the traditional way the church understands it, that Jesus is going to crack the sky and, and all, a bunch of people are going to disappear. There's going to be car accidents all over. I'm not talking about the Left Behind series. I'm talking about this is the year when I believe Christians are going to start really believing that they're seated in the heavenly places and that what we're doing here on earth is just a virtual reality game. Yeah, we really are seated in the heavenlies. When you imagine that you really are seated in the heavens with Christ, like the word of God said, I'm not making this up. This is what God said. Read the book of Ephesians. He said, if you're seated in the heavenlies, all principalities and powers, all that junk that the devil tries to put on you are under your feet. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans 8, 11. That same spirit, you see, Jesus laid down his life and he didn't even uh, 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 bring himself back to life. It was the father which is in heaven. He depended, he had faith in his father that if I lay down my life, he will quicken this mortal body. And we got to have that same faith. God, if I lay down all that good stuff I thought I had in the world, if I, if I forsake those friends who I thought were good to me, if I give that all up, God said, I'll raise you up. I'll quicken your mortal body. And the way you saw things before, I begin to change them and transform them. And I'll begin to give you new desires that I will lead you into the path that will take you to your destiny. I don't know how it is that some people get offended at the gospel. The gospel is the good news. The gospel is the greatest uh, message for mankind. The gospel is the only way to salvation. The gospel is the only way to secure your eternal destination. I studied the Quran a little bit and I read in the Quran how uh, if your good outweighs your bad, uh, then you get to spend eternity in paradise. If not, you go to the hot place. You'll go to hell. And I often ask uh, people who believe in the Muslim faith, I said, well, you know, how do you know? And the Prophet Muhammad himself said, I don't know for sure. He said, the only sure way is if you die a martyr, if you die with someone killing you for your faith, not killing you because you, you know, you, you robbed a store or did something wrong. So that's the only, or if you kill an infidel, someone who is promoting another faith other than Islam. If you kill that person, then you're guaranteed a position in heaven. Wow. I don't know how much good I have to do. It kind of forces you into having someone kill you or killing somebody else. Yeah. Jesus said, I've already taken care of that. Somebody died. It was me. Yeah. Don't have to worry about that. Blood was shed. It was mine. It was shed for you. And he said, all you have to do is accept that. And then identify yourself with me. Jesus said, this works only if you are not ashamed of me. He said, if you are ashamed of me before your friends and those around you, he said, I will be ashamed of you before my father. So this whole thing won't work. You won't be able to 
enjoy the benefits of knowing Jesus. Now, when you identify with Christ, uh, I crucify with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, then it opens us up to all of the benefits. Now we can have divine healing. We took the yeah. communion, and the communion said, my body was broken that you might be healed. And I believe this is something else that the church has yet to fully step into, that everybody who has accepted yeah. Jesus Christ has the right to be healed of everything. Yeah. I believe it, and it is so, and it yes. is so. Yes. Because that same communion supper, we take and break the bread, uh, we also take the cup and say, this blood that was shed for me cleanses all of my sins. Yes. What if we believed about the blood the same way we believed about the bread? Well, some things, you know, God just wants you to suffer with. No, God did not call, want that for you. God doesn't want you to suffer. He wants you to identify with the sufferings of Jesus Christ. But in this world, as miserable as it is, God says, I will give you peace. God says, I will give you joy. God says, I will cause you to sit in heavenly places. I will cause you to celebrate in the midst of sorrow. I'll give you beauty for ashes. I'll give you the oil of joy for the spirit of heaviness. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. I was singing, serenading my wife this morning. I said, I, uh, that, that song that my Aunt Mary used to sing a long time ago, I was singing to her, I said, you ask me why? I sing and shout. You ask me why? You know, it goes on and on. Now I forget the, the, the how's it go? Help a brother out. <laughs> and the, the, the chorus is, because it's in my heart. It's in my heart. See, people don't want Jesus Christ. They don't want to do what he says to do. They don't want the full deliverance. They want to go to heaven, but they want to do what they want to do. And it's because they've not fully allowed Jesus to possess their heart. See, Jesus will only take as much room of your house as you surrender to him. I'm reminded of the story. This man bought this house, and, and some people said, you know, this, this house is haunted. You shouldn't buy it. He bought it anyway. And, and every night, uh, someone would kick open the door, beat him up, slap him up against the walls, and bloody him and break all of his stuff up and leave. And somebody said, brother, you know what you need? You need to invite Jesus in. If you let Jesus in, he'll take care of it. He'll fix it for you. He said, oh, yeah, that sounds good. I need some help here. And, he, and he, he invites Jesus to come over. Jesus comes and said, Jesus, I got this nice room upstairs next to the bathroom. It's all yours. You can do what you want with it. You can paint it. You can put your own furniture in there. If you don't like anything, let me know. I'll get it for you. So that night comes, the guy knocks on the door, and as soon as he cracks it open, he kicks the door open on, he snatches the guy by his collar, he punches him in the face, he throws him on the floor, he stops on his chest, he starts slamming him all around, all over the, uh, the dining room and the living room, and then he leaves. In the morning, he sees Jesus coming down the steps, and says, Jesus, where were you? Didn't you hear me getting beat up? He said, I was in my room. So well, this is what I'm going to do, Jesus. Jesus, you can have the whole upstairs. You can have all the bedrooms, all the closet space, everything you need. I want you to make yourself at home. The whole upstairs is yours. And if you need anything from the kitchen, I'll bring it up to you. Just let a brother know. <laughs> Jesus said, okay, thank you so much. Nighttime comes, someone knocks on the door, he peeks through the peek hole. While he's peeking, he sees the devil out there. The devil kicks the door open again, punches him in the face, punches him in the gut, slams his head up against the wall, bloodies his nose. He kicks him in the knee, turns him around, kicks him on the other side, slams him into the wall, making all this noise. He's got nothing left in the house to break on the first floor, and then he leaves. Next morning, he sees Jesus coming down and says, Jesus, surely you had to hear that. This guy's got both eyes blackened, most of his teeth out. He looks like a professional <laughs> hockey player, and he's got bruises all over him, cuts. He said, hey, I was all over upstairs. Mm. I was rooting for you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, but downstairs is, is your space. Oh. Upstairs is my space. Mm. I he said, okay, Jesus. I think I got it now. <laughs> so Jesus just take the whole house. Yeah. So as soon as he says that, he is beep, beep, beep. He looks out. There's a moving truck backing up to his house. 
He said, James, what is this? He said, you said I could have the whole house. I didn't like how you had to decorate. People come in and start taking all some things up. Yeah, but that was my grandmother. And then he's taking it, moving it all. Then Jesus started moving a new carpet in, new sofa in, new TV, new appliances, new lights and fixtures and everything. He said, doesn't it look better? He said, well, yeah, it did. But I, I was kind of fond of some of that old stuff. He said, it's going to be OK. Nighttime comes, knock, 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 he peeks at the I can't believe it. He's here again. And he's just about to grab the doorknob and try and hold the door closed. Jesus pushes him aside. I'll take care of this. <laughs> There's another fight that goes on this time. Jesus punches the devil in the face, in the eye, gives him a little black eye, bloodies his nose. He kicks him in the behind. Without wrecking any of the house, he gives the devil a good old fashioned working over. And, and then the man said, like, Jesus, where were you all this time? He said, I only used the space that you gave me. Yeah. I didn't want to use the space downstairs because yeah. it was your space. Yeah. But if you surrender it all to me, yeah. some of you are wondering why it is I'm getting beat up in life. I come to church every Sunday. Well, where do you go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday? I, I read my word uh, for five minutes every day. Uh, how long do you stay in front of the TV? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Saturday. How long have you surrendered to me? How much time have yeah. you given me? How much of yourself will have you given unto me? I said it was going to be short. Sorry. A lot of preachers are preaching about giving tithes in the church. And people ask me about that. And I, I don't really want to say because I don't want to disrupt them. Uh, Pastor, should we give tithes? Because I'm going to this church and say, we don't have to give tithes. And they're kind of insinuating that if I don't have to give tithes at your church, maybe I'll come to your church. I said, well, honestly, I don't entirely believe in tithes because uh, it's like that man giving the man a, a room, Jesus, a room upstairs in his house. I believe we should say, God, the whole thing is yours. Yeah. I'm going to start with the tithe. And if you instruct me to give otherwise, I'll do that because the whole thing is yours. So if you're not hearing anything from God, start with the tithe. That's a great place to start. He said, because if you give your tithe, he said, that will allow me to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing if you're faithful in that. All of the benefits that you read about in the Bible, they are for you. Healing, Amen. deliverance, salvation of your family. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, not only shall thou be saved, but thy household shall be saved. I believe we can claim all these promises, but we have to be surrendered with Christ. We have to be crucified with him. We have to be buried with him so that we can say we are risen with Christ. Yes. Yes. And, and so it says in 1 John, I believe it's chapter 3, he said, as Jesus is right now, so are we in this world. We can be like the resurrected Christ, not the Christ that we read about in the gospel. That would be amazing. If we could walk on water and multiply fish and loaves and heal the sick and cleanse the lepers. And we could do all of that. But he said, as Jesus is right now, seated in the heavenly places, yeah. Yeah. we can have power. We can transform yeah. this world. Yeah. If one can chase a thousand, two can put ten thousand to five. When we really grab hold of this, yeah. we can transform cities. Yeah. Yeah, but the whole world is going crazy. You don't understand. But God says, greater is he that is in me than he that is within the world. I believe the power of God is so great that the, all of the demons in hell, earth, and wherever they are, come together, cannot match the amount of Holy Ghost that I have in my pinky if I can come to that realization. The word of God says, now are we the sons of God, but it doth not yet appear what we shall be. We have not fully gotten the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. He said, but when we get that revelation, he said, we will be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that's not talking about the rapture, that's talking about the here and now. Jesus cannot come back until, until the sons, mature sons of God begin to manifest. He said, God, look no further. Here am I. I want to know you in the power of your resurrection. I want to know you in the fellowship of your suffering. I want to be conformable unto your death. God, I want it all. Yeah. Uh, yes. I don't even have to call J.G. Wentworth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's mine, Lord, and I want it now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. But they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That promise is yours 
Because you're risen today. You're risen with Christ. This is the hour of deliverance. Deliverance is taking the land. If you don't know Jesus today, I encourage you. We're looking at amazing times uh, ahead. Marvel comic books have nothing on what uh, is going to be poured out upon the believers. DC Comics has nothing on, on it. You talk about Superman and, and Wonder Woman, you're going to see Superman and Wonder Woman rise up. Yeah. And it's not limited to anyone with a title or it doesn't matter how wealthy or poor you are or, or, or what male, female, young, old. Yeah. It, God says, whosoever will. Right. I'm looking through the whole earth and it, it can yeah. be you today. I don't care how high you are right now. I don't care who you slept with last night. God said, I can clean you up today and put my spirit within you. All I need for you to say, yes, I believe in Jesus. Yes, I accept Jesus Christ. Come into my heart and help me. I'm turning away from my sins. I'm turning uh, my back on the things that I used to do. Help me to walk toward what you have. And God says, learn of me. But don't stop your prayer there. Ask God to send his Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. It's a promise. You said you must go away, but you will send another comforter. And then, we, God, I want that comforter. I need that comforter. And the book of Ephesians said he will seal you. He, the Holy Spirit will help uh, keep you from the things of the world. It will change your taste buds for the things of the world. And then continue on in that prayer and say, Lord, not only do I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, I want to be filled to overflowing so it's not only in me, but it's on me. Oh, the Holy Spirit to go ahead of me, behind me, on my right hand, and on my left. I, and then ask God to give you a prayer language that you speak in other tongues. Because it says those that speak in other tongues, it edifies you. It builds you up in your most holy faith. Yes, yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We are risen with Christ today. Yes. Yes. I don't know. I feel a little bit higher today than I did yesterday. Yes. Yes. This is the year of the rapture. This is the year we're going to ascend. And we're really going to take our seat right. in the heavens. Yes. And we're going to trample the devil. Yes. Under our feet. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Shalom. God bless you until the next time.